Greetings, Earthlings. This monster <laughs> is a Fluke 5200A programmable AC calibrator, which I got off of eBay, and it was sold as... Um, said it was working when put into storage several years ago, but now it powers on but produces no output. So we're going to fire it up and try and see what it... Uh, figure out what it needs to get it back working again. Uh, power on. I have, uh, it, it has a uh, counter output on the back. So you can set frequency and you can set the uh, AC RMS voltage. Um, there's a counter output which would correspond to the frequency uh, but, uh, you know, so I want to see if it's generating the appropriate frequency, even if that signal is not making it to the output. So I've got the Heathkit frequency counter with its Nixie tubes. And uh, so I've set it, I have it set right now. Let's see, it's set at one kilohertz. What happened to that light? It's blinking. It's blinking. It's gone out. Tap, tap. Okay. <laughs> okay. That may need a little work. Um, one kilohertz, 19 volts out. Uh, you can see it's in standby, but even in standby, uh, that's showing 989.83 hertz. Now, the specs on this thing uh, at one kilohertz would be um, amplitude is plus or minus 0 0.02 percent and the frequency is uh, plus or minus one percent. So that's pretty close even though it's in standby. So I don't know, I mean, what's going on? So it's following, okay. So that's fine. And it's got a phase lock, but that's to lock it to an external uh, signal. Uh, so that puts it like three and a half percent over. This is one about one percent under right now. Hasn't warmed up. This is oh, this is by the way, those specs are after an hour of warm up. So I've just turned it on. Um, operate well. Does not change the frequency. So I'm curious, let's verify that it has no output. I'll bring in a Fluke 8050A. Now this is one that I calibrated against my Tektronix DMM4020. Uh, the Tektronix was calibrated by Tektronics and found to be within spec. So then I calibrated this against that. Uh, we'll power it on. So this, uh, so this should read uh, pretty accurate. Um, and it's reading nothing because it's in standby and because I have it on uh, DC mode. Okay, so let's switch to AC volts. Uh, that's on the 200 millivolt scale. This I said what 19 volts, so we'll go to 20 volt scale. Okay, let's just show. At zero, we've got eight counts. I'm just gonna dangle these in there. Okay. So let's see what happens. Uh, sense internal. Yeah, internal or external sensing on this. These are for external sense, but uh, it makes no sense to me. Uh, I'm using internal. So switching to operate. And of course, as we saw, uh, the frequency didn't change. And uh, we have output. And on a 20 volt scale, output is 19.005 volts. 
Uh, this is working. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why they said it wasn't working. Why it had no output, but it has output. Maybe let's try 1.9 volts. Let's go down one range. Uh, it went into standby mode. Maybe he never switched it to operate or something. Put it on a two volt scale. <clears throat> 1.9001. Yeah, well, that's certainly within spec. And again, this hasn't warmed up. Um, and this wouldn't read exactly 1.9, I don't think, well, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Okay. Uh, well, we can go to the uh, 200 millivolt scale. And it went to standby again. Um, yeah, that's working fine. Uh, should I, um, what do you think? Should I file a, uh, complaint with eBay that it's, uh, that it's not as described? Because <laughs> it was supposed to be something that doesn't work. Uh, let's go to, uh, let's bring it down to 100 hertz. It did not go into standby that time. It's still at basically 190. This is reading 85, but it's not in lock anymore. Uh, as we saw with this thing, it doesn't like to lock on those real low frequencies uh, on the, the multiplier. Uh, but uh, it is reading between 99 and 100. This is reading, uh, I'd call that 190 millivolts. Um, okay. 10 hertz. I don't know, does this work at that low? Well, apparently it does. <laughs> uh, let's take it up to, uh, for some reason, 45, I think, is what you use to calibrate this. Do I have that? Eh, it's not on that sheet. Um, maybe I'm thinking of another meter. Uh, but 45 hertz, 45, 46, you know, plus or minus one count there. 190 millivolts. One point nine volts. Well, that's the worst. Uh, that's the worst result we've gotten yet. One point eight nine nine one. Let's go to nineteen volts. Goes to standby. It's nice of it to go to standby, so I can. <laughs> it reminds me to change my meter. Uh, 1.996, you know, that's still within spec for this. Um, now, it will not go, even though there's a thousand volt range, you need another big, giant, expensive, heavy box, uh, which I don't have. So the highest it can go is like 110 volts. Well, 119, okay. So we'll go there, 119 volts at 45 hertz, 100 and, yeah, 119, that's working fine. 60 line frequency in North America anyway. Oh, <laughs> 119 dead on. Let's go back to 100. 119. Oh, well, I guess I really have nothing to show with this. Um, it's usable as I bought it. Except for that one flaky little LED over there. 
Well, okay then, we'll call this my Cal Lab setup. Uh, the 5200A, as we just saw. The 343A, which we've seen in previous episodes. And the 8500A, uh, which we've also seen in, in previous episodes. Um, this I had not calibrated at uh, for AC. Uh, I calibrated against this for DC, and we'll, we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, but for AC, I've got it set to 111.111 volts and 100 hertz. Um, and you can see it's reading 111.111, plus or minus one count. Um, I did engage the vernier and so it's off by like 0.01% this relative to this. Uh, I call that close enough. Um, if we go to DC volts, we'll see. I'll turn that, well, put that on DC. I got 10 volts out. Turning that on, volts DC, 10, and all zeros. So, well, plus or minus one in the last count, yeah. <laughs> so that's a pretty good setup, I think, for, uh, you know, 19, what, 70s or 80s vintage uh, gear there. <laughs> 